Okay, in this lesson we're going to continue investigating reciprocal functions. We're going to look more specifically at properties of reciprocal functions. In the previous lesson we looked at graphing reciprocal functions. And you'll notice that a lot of the properties can be taken from the graphs. But in some cases uh, you may want to look at the algebraic way to look at those properties. Uh, here's some key ideas that we looked at in the previous lesson for graphing reciprocal functions. Uh, first of all, and we'll notice this with properties as well, graph the non-reciprocal function first. Uh, the non-reciprocal function and its reciprocal function intersect at the points x and 1 and x and negative 1 because the reciprocals of those are themselves. Those are called invariant points. Uh, thirdly, the x-intercepts of non-reciprocal functions represent the non-permissible values of the reciprocal function because you can't divide by zeros. These also represent the vertical asymptotes of the reciprocal function. And fourth and fifthly, basically the reciprocal relationship is that non as a non-reciprocal function moves farther away from the x-axis, uh, the reciprocal function moves closer to the x-axis and conversely as a non-reciprocal function moves closer to the x-axis from the invariant point the reciprocal function moves farther away from the x-axis. What we're going to look at now is some of the specific properties of reciprocal functions uh, both from the graph and just algebraically. So uh, we'll do a number of them at any point if you want to pause the video and either try it yourself or just rewind it and, and look at it again. That would be absolutely great a great idea. How, what we're going to do is for each reciprocal function, so the red functions, the reciprocal functions will always be in red and the non-reciprocal functions in blue. We're going to state the non-permissible values, the domain, the equations of the vertical asymptotes. Uh, we're going to state the range, we're going to state the x-intercepts, and state the y-intercept. Uh, in a lot of cases you can see we can get all of this information from the graph itself. But what I'm going to do is focus on a little bit more on the algebra. As far as the non-permissible values of the reciprocal function go, the non-reciprocal values of the reciprocal function are equivalent to the x-intercepts. So if I take the non-reciprocal function and make it equal zero uh, and solve algebraically, what you're going to see, and you can see this from the graph as well, <clears throat> is we get x equals 2 is an x-intercept, which is true of the non-reciprocal function. This is the x-intercept. What that means is that the non-permissible value, or the vertical asymptote, or the restrictions on the domain of the reciprocal function uh, is positive 2. So the non-permissible value of the reciprocal function is x can't be 2. There's the relationship. Uh, the domain is all real numbers except for x can't be 2, and the equation of this vertical dotted line or vertical asymptote is x is equal to 2. Uh, so there's a relationship between the x-intercept and the non principal values domain and equation vertical asymptote. As far as the range is concerned, what you'll see is that the range of the reciprocal function it goes up forever, it also goes down forever, but it will actually never quite touch the x-axis. So the restriction here is all real numbers except y cannot equal zero. As far as x-intercepts go, you'll notice that the x-intercepts, because it never touches zero, uh, there are no x-intercepts of the reciprocal function, and there, this will always be the case. Reciprocal functions will never touch the x-axis. They will always get really, really close to it, but never quite touch it. Uh, as far as the y-intercept goes, what you may want to do is figure out the y-intercept of the non-reciprocal function, and y-intercepts occur when x equals 0. So if I substitute x equals 0 into the non-reciprocal function, I'll have negative 2 uh, times 0, sorry, plus 4, and that will get me 0 plus 4, which is 4. That's the, and you can see it right here, that's the y-intercept of the non-reciprocal function. So the y-intercept of the reciprocal function would be the reciprocal of that, 1 quarter. So it's y is equal to 1 over 4. Uh, let's look at some more and investigate some more. Uh, here's another graph, and it's reciprocal. Uh, you could write this either way. What I've done is written it in vertex form and standard form. You'll see the usefulness of both, but uh, we'll look at how to put things into vertex form as we move into some, some more examples later on. Uh, first thing you want to do is, if we find the x-intercepts, which you can see what they are, 1 and 5, of the non-reciprocal function, uh, we would know the non-permissible values of the reciprocal function. So what I'm going to do is actually solve this algebra. Algebraically. This is uh, from a previous chapter on solving quadratic equations. In this particular case, uh, we can factor it, so that will give us values of x is equal to 1 and x is equal to 5 as my x-intercepts of the non-reciprocal function. So that means that my non-permissible values of my reciprocal function are directly related to that. We've looked at the graph of this in the previous lesson, uh, but my non-permissible values of my non-reciprocal function, or my reciprocal function, are x can't be 1, x also can't be 5. As far as the domain goes, exactly the same thing. It goes to the left and the right forever, but it is restricted and will never touch x is equal to 1 and x is equal to 5. So that is 
the restrictions on the domain. The equations of the vertical asymptotes are x is equal to 1 and x is equal to 5. As far as your range goes, uh, slightly, slightly, slightly different on the previous than the previous one because uh, you'll see that below the x-axis, actually the highest point is right here. You may want to ask yourself, what is that point? Well, it definitely has to be the reciprocal of this point. And this has an output of negative 3. Uh, the range is a little bit more difficult, so I wouldn't make it a huge focus. Uh, but the reciprocal of negative 3 is negative 1 third. Uh, so as far as the range above the x-axis goes, so the range here uh, above the x-axis would be everything greater than, not or equal to, just greater than 0. And as far as below the x-axis, uh, it would be everything less than or equal to negative a third. A little bit tricky, so two parts of the, of the range. As far as your x-intercepts go, shouldn't shock you. There's absolutely none of them. As far as your y-intercepts go, I would, I would substitute 0, or input 0 into your, oops, sorry, input 0 into your non-reciprocal function. So that would give us 5, which would make your y-intercept of your reciprocal function 1 fifth. All right, let's do some more. Uh, again, at any point, if you want to pause this, just go right ahead. These are the same types of problems. It says graph. The only difference is we're going to graph each reciprocal function and state those things. Uh, I've done a lot of this first work for you. So all that was given to us in the original question was this. So if it says graph the reciprocal function, what I would do is first graph the non-reciprocal function. That's the easiest, most clear way. So the non-reciprocal function is a straight line of a y-intercept of negative 2 and a slope of a half. Uh, so in this particular case, what I'll do is really quickly graph the reciprocal function. Uh, a vertical asymptote through the zeros. Here's the invariant point. So the reciprocal function would look something, and you can look at the previous lesson if you're struggling with why does it look like this, would look something like this. Okay, as far as all of the characteristics go, I've already solved that. Uh, the non-permissible values are where the non-reciprocal function equals zero, or the x-intercepts. You can see that visually right here. The non-reciprocal or non-permissible values of the reciprocal function are x can't equal four, x can't domain is x can't equal four, the equation of the vertical asymptote is x equals four, uh, and you can see that from the x-intercepts of the non-reciprocal function here. Um, again, probably a confusion for you as I'm saying a lot of non-reciprocal and reciprocal. So if you can get that sorted out in your brain, the relationship between the two, uh, this shouldn't be too bad for you. Uh, the range is y is can't equal to zero because it will never touch the x-axis. There are no x-intercepts. There never will be on reciprocal functions. And the y-intercept for the reciprocal function, again, is y is equal to negative a half. We're going to quickly, quickly do two more, investigate two more. Uh, this next one, and we may uh, really quickly do the last one and touch on it. Uh, what I've done on this next one is already, so it says graph this. What I'm going to do is graph the non-reciprocal function. I've completed the square and put it into vertex form. So our vertex here is at negative 2 and positive 3. You can review the completing the square right here if you'd like to. And it opens down in this fashion right here. And you may want to look at a previous lesson if you don't understand. This would be in the chapter 3 part if you don't understand how I am getting these points. It is half of all the perfect squares uh, is how I'm getting these points. Okay, So there is sort of what the non-reciprocal function looks like. As far as the reciprocal function goes, it would look something like this. Right through these x-intercepts is where the vertical asymptotes are going to go. As you can see, those aren't at integer points, so that's going to be a little bit tricky later on for finding the non-permissible values, etc., but we'll talk about that. Uh, as well as the invariant points would be right here and here, and would look something like this. Here's invariant points which aren't on integer values, but that's okay in each of these regions, so your reciprocal function would look something like this. Okay, as far as your non-permissible values go, uh, you can see that they're not an integer value. So what you're going to want to do, again, is make the non-reciprocal non -reciprocal function equal 0. This isn't factorable, so what you could do is use the quadratic formula to find out where those x-intercepts are. And the quadratic formula would say that this would be uh, negative b, so negative the opposite of negative 2, square root of b squared, so negative 2 squared minus... Uh, 4 times a, negative a half, times c, which is 1, uh, all over 2 times a. So in this particular case, we would have 2 plus
plus or minus the square root of 4, and this would be uh, this would be positive, sorry, this would be negative 2, so you're subtracting negative 2, which is adding 2, and that's all over negative 1. So this would be 2 plus or minus the square root of 6 all over negative 1. And if you'd want to do that on your calculator, you could find out those two values. So one of the values is 2 plus the square root of 6 divided by negative 1. And that's roughly at, and you can see it right here, negative 4.45. Uh, and your other one would be at where it is 2 minus the square root of 6 divided by negative 1. That is roughly at 0 0.45. And you can see that that is exactly where those two points are. Uh, so my non-permissible values would be x cannot equal negative 4.45 and x cannot equal 0 0.45. My domain exactly the same is x cannot be negative 4.45 or x cannot be 0 0.45. My equations of the vertical asymptotes are identical. <clears throat> Uh, the range here, in this particular case, uh, this point would be have a y value of a third. So the upper range would be greater than or equal to one-third, which is interesting. And the lower range would be less than zero because it won't touch the x-axis. As far as the x-intercepts of the reciprocal function go, there's none. And the y-intercept would be the reciprocal. If I input zero into the non-reciprocal function, I would get... 0 0.5 times 0 squared minus 2 times 0 plus 1, which would get me 1. So the y-intercept would also be, and you can see it right here, would be 1. The reciprocal of 1 is 1. Uh, I'm going to skip the next example and just go to some of the key ideas. <clears throat> Some key ideas for determining characteristics of reciprocal functions. Here they are. Uh, one is that the x-intercept or x-intercepts of the non-reciprocal function represent the NPVs, the restrictions on the domain, and you saw this in all the examples, and the equations of the vertical asymptotes of the reciprocal function. Uh, secondly, there are absolutely no x-intercepts for reciprocal functions. Next, the y-intercept of the reciprocal function is the reciprocal, not shockingly, of the y-intercept of the non-reciprocal function. And finally, uh, you may want to determine the range. This is one of the more difficult processes, especially for the uh, quadratic reciprocal functions, the range of a reciprocal, reciprocal function from its graph. <clears throat>